My preference to start the procedure is to utilize a 2.5 millimeter long drill bit. And you can see the entry point is just lateral to the midline on the distal fibula. And the drill bit gives you the ability to steer the device. It's side cutting. I think it's much more forgiving to find the intramedullary space. Once you're in the canal, the, the drill bit comes out. And you can place the guide wire, the 1.6 millimeter guide wire in. And then you're going to prepare the distal fibula utilizing a 6.2 millimeter uh, tapered reamer. And this is an area of the procedure that you certainly want to increase the amount of fluoroscopy. Um, the distal fibula is completely prepared uh, when the flutes of the drill, as you see on the right-hand side, are uh, buried uh, within the, the uh, fibular cortex. Uh, and I would encourage you to slightly oveream in this situation. Uh, I do think it allows the nail insertion to be a little bit smoother. And it, if, in fact, you need to advance the nail to take advantage of the syndesmotic holes, I think you'll find it uh, beneficial. The reamer is advanced until the expansion uh, in the center of the drill bit is seen radiographically within uh, the context of the distal fibula. Uh, you'll notice through all of these stages that I'm slightly inverting the foot, uh, and, and sometimes that's necessary to get uh, the appropriate uh, entry angle uh, to access the uh, intramedullary canal and deliver the device uh, successfully. If the reamer advances easily through the isthmus of the fibula, uh, then consideration should be given to upsizing the nail and the corresponding instrumentation. I think it's important to note here that when the nail with the outrigger assembly are placed into the fibula, the ankle itself should be brought off the table with uh, a stack of towels and that will leave an accurate angle for syndesmotic fixation placement. Based on the patient's anatomy, we elected to uh, use the smaller three millimeter nail, uh, which you can see easily slides up the canal so as you can see from the uh, fluoroscopic image on the right, the nail is slightly proud at this point. So we'll insert the impact cap and provide some gentle blows and seat the nail to its appropriate depth. When the nail is in appropriate position, you will see that it is uh, slightly countersunk uh, relative to the distal cortex of the fibula as indicated by the uh, guide pin through the outrigger. Once the nail is fairly well seated in the fibula, you're gonna place a 1.6 millimeter guide pin through the outrigger jig, and that will give you a radiographic marker uh, to determine whether or not the nail is in appropriate position. It takes quite a few turns uh, of the uh, driver to engage the torque limiting device um, to get the talons to completely engage the endosteal surface. And I would recommend doing this under fluoroscopy just to make sure the talons deploy because really this is the major clinical benefit of utilizing this nail, providing rotational stability and um, ax axial stability by engaging uh, the endosteal surface. And you know the process will be complete because there are several audible clicks that will come from the driver when you've reached your maximum torque. At this point in time, the nail is essentially locked proximally. Now you can create a stable construct by placing interlocking screws in multiple angles to the distal portion of the nail through the outrigger device. The inner and outer sleeves are placed through the outrigger uh, and several small stab incisions are utilized to introduce the instrumentation and ultimately the screws. These screws are obviously unicortical. The true benefit of this nail Typically, I'll insert uh, at least two of the three screws, um, generally from lateral to medial, but there is an anterior to posterior option, uh, again, through the outrigger device. They will increase uh, construct stability simply by having your uh, fixation options in a divergent manner. Once you're satisfied with the distal interlocking screws, uh, if appropriate, based on radiographic evidence or uh, rotary stress tests, syndesmotic fixation can be placed. The outrigger jig has a predetermined anatomic 30 degree offset angle to improve the accuracy of replicating the anatomic axis. The drill bit here that's shown is a 3.7 millimeter drill bit uh, in preparation for uh, tightrope placement through the proximal syndesmotic option. Once the syndesmotic hole is prepared, uh, the outrigger jig can be disassembled from the nail, uh, and then the tightrope can be placed uh, in typical fashion, as you see here. 
in cases of severe osteoporosis, it would not be uncommon for the lateral button to sink within the cortex and rest upon the nail, which does not have any clinical concern and certainly may increase the strength of the construct.